Good afternoon. The first item of business this afternoon is portfolio questions and, as ever, short, succinct questions and answers would be appreciated. Question number one, Jamie McGregor. Uh, thank you. To ask the Scottish Government how it supports the teaching of foreign languages in schools. Minister Alistair Allen. President Officer, we want all young people in Scotland to have excellent language learning opportunities uh, from a young age as a normal and expected part of a broad, relevant school education. And that's why our 1 plus 2 languages policy is supporting local authorities and schools with significant extra funding, £9 million over two years. And it's why we're, looking, why we're working closely with Education Scotland, Scotland's National Centre for Languages and others, to create the conditions where early and continued language learning becomes the norm. Jamie McGregor. Um, yes, I thank the Minister for that answer. Does he agree with me and the findings of the foreign language learning inquiry conducted by the Parliament's European Committee last year that foreign language assistants can play a very important and cost-effective role in helping our school pupils learn a modern foreign language? Do, does he therefore share my concern that the number of foreign language assistants in Scotland schools in 2013 to 14 was down by almost three quarters compared to 2005 stroke 2006. And what action will the Scottish Government take to reverse this situation and ensure as many pupils as possible can benefit from working with a foreign language assistant? Minister. Well, uh, I uh, share uh, the members' uh, uh, enthusiasm about the importance uh, of uh, native speakers in the class. Uh, uh, as he knows, I met with the, the cross-party group on German about this and other issues uh, only last week. Uh, it is important to mention that uh, in the last year or so that the numbers overall amongst language assistants has actually gone up. I appreciate there is much to be done, um, but uh, there are also, it's worth saying, because I know his particular interest in German, 30 German trainees who have been brought into the, the system as well. And the Scottish Government works with the British Council and others to make sure that we continue to improve the, the availability uh, of modern language assistance throughout the, the school system. Thank you. Supplementary, Claire Adamson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Does the, cabinet, the Minister sorry, agree that the 1 plus 2 policy is the most ambitious language learning programme in the UK and that the economic and cultural opportunities that can be gained from learning a second or third language in addition to mother tongue are extensive? Minister. Well, yes, it is true that uh, the, the benefits are very extensive and indeed, and I think it, it's something that across the chamber we can probably agree on that cognitively and culturally and economically it's in Scotland's interests that we develop a culture of language learning much earlier than has been the case in the past. I appreciate that will require a lot of work for all of us together within the education system, uh, but I believe uh, the end is, is very much worth doing that. Thank you. Question number two, Siobhan McMahon. To ask the Scottish Government what measures it is taking to combat bullying in schools. Alistair Allen. Our national approach to anti-bullying, developed in partnership with stakeholders, sets out a common vision and aims to make sure that work across all agencies and communities is jointly focused on tackling all types of bullying. To support the implementation of the national approach, we have established and wholly fund Respect Me. Uh, a national anti-bullying service to build confidence and capacity to tackle all types of bullying effectively. We are committed to refreshing the national approach uh, to ensure that it does remain current and reflects policy developments, and a working group will be set up early in 2015. Siobhan McMahon. I thank the Minister for that answer. The Minister will be aware of Enable Scotland's new campaign, Be the Change, which is aimed at tackling abusive and offensive language about people who have learning disabilities. Enable Scotland, working in collaboration with a number of partners, have developed a school resource for teachers of S1 and S2 pupils, which will raise awareness of learning disability and take an early intervention approach to promote positive attitudes to learning disability. Does the Minister therefore support Enable Scotland's campaign, and what action will he take to encourage local authorities to implement the four-week lesson plan in secondary schools, which will focus on educating children about learning disability from the 2015-16 academic year? Minister. Well, the, the member is right to point to the, the particular importance of ensuring that, that young people grow up with a, a respect for and an understanding of the issues faced by, by people with, with uh, uh, learning uh, disabilities. And I think one of the things uh, that the Scottish Government and the education system more generally now focuses on is, is uh, promoting positive behaviour. That's central to what we do. Uh, and it's central to our understanding of the, the kind of dignity uh, that everyone has to expect and should respect uh, as a right within our schools. 
Thank you. Question number three, Richard Simpson. To ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking to address teachers' workload issues. Alistair Allen. The Scottish Government is uh, working with teachers' representatives, local authorities and other partners to address teacher workload issues. This includes an unprecedented package of support and resources to implement Curriculum for Excellence. Our Curriculum for Excellence working group on tackling bureaucracy is taking forward a strong set of actions to support schools uh, in reducing unnecessary bureaucracy. Richard Simpson. Can I thank the Minister for that answer, but does he share the concerns of the EIS who say that there is a workload crisis in our schools, Scottish schools, or with the NASWUT, who have said the Scottish Government is facing a ticking time bomb. The Cabinet Secretary's predecessor said that he wanted to maintain or increase teacher numbers, yet every year since 2007 there has been a decrease. In fact, there are 4,000 fewer than when the SNP took office. On top of that, cuts in classroom assistance and support staff. Teachers union, are teachers' unions right to voice their concerns? And will the Cabinet Secretary inform Parliament whether he intends to reverse the cuts, maintain the current level, or to continue cut teacher numbers even further? Minister. Well, the numbers have stabilised since uh, 2011. The, the member is aware, of course, who the employers are. The employers are local authorities, and uh, the government does work with local authorities to ensure, as I'm sure local authorities also want to see, uh, that uh, numbers are maintained in line with the, the existing uh, teacher-pupil uh, uh, ratio. Uh, I think uh, in the broader issue of workload that he, he raises uh, in his, his question, uh, I've never been uh, someone who tries to shy away from the fact that the introduction of a completely new set of qualifications has involved work for teachers. Um, but I think that the, the work that has been done uh, since the successful implementation of those qualifications to involve the teachers and the teacher unions in planning a way ahead is entirely positive. Supplementary, Colin Beatty. Does the Minister agree with the comments by Terry Lanigan, Executive Director of Education in West Dumbartonshire, at the Education and Culture Committee 30 September, where he stated that having worked in education for 37 years, that there has been no initiative in Scottish education during that time about which there has been more communication or more support? Minister. Well, I certainly do uh, welcome uh, the spirit uh, and content of those comments. Of course, they, they tie in with uh, other comments from elsewhere in the sector. For, us, for, course, for uh, instance, uh, Ken Cunningham, the General Secretary of Schools Leader Scotland, uh, mentioned that the uh, preparation and consultation uh, uh, in that area, there's been more than uh, I can ever remember, and the amount of effort that's gone into this knocks uh, uh, the others into the corner. Again, I don't take away from the work that's been involved, but I think in all parts of the education sector, uh, the work that's gone in has been significant, and I think uh, uh, we have all benefited from that. Question number four, Angus MacDonald. To ask the Scottish Government what discussions it has had with Falkirk Council regarding its obligation to provide a flexible approach to parental choice for early learning and childcare. Aileen Campbell. Mm. Government meets regularly with local authorities and discusses a range of issues that includes childcare. It is for each local authority to implement the provisions in the Children and Young People Scotland Act relating to early learning and childcare, taking into account local needs and priorities. The Act includes a new duty on local authorities to increase flexibility year on year based on consultation with representative local populations of parents and to publish plans showing how they are doing so. Angus MacDonald. I thank the Minister for her reply. She may be aware of a privately funded nursery which serves my area, the Little Stars Nursery, which has been trying for seven years to gain partnership status with Falkirk Council, but has been refused despite rating standards of four and five. Parents claim this is discrimination as it's denying their children access to local education services, and there's no doubt that Falkirk Council is falling short of the Scottish Government's objective in this regard. What can the Scottish Government do to ensure Falkirk Council enables proper parental choice through a flexible approach? Minister. I thank the member for raising the issue. We expect local authorities to meet their statutory responsibilities, and it's for each of them to decide how best to do that to meet local needs. And that includes using a mix of provi uh, providers, such as family centres, childminders and private providers, like the uh, member mentions uh, that he knows uh, well locally. Uh, as I would re re reiterate, sorry, um, 
Local authorities are now required to consult with uh, groups of parents at least once every two years on patterns of childcare provision which would best meet their needs. And this should introduce greater levels of flexibility and choice in the system as we work with local government to further develop and expand the provision that is so important to so many families across the country. But I would be happy to meet with the member to discuss the issue further if he thinks that would be helpful. Thank you. Question number five, Willie Coffey. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government whether it plans to introduce software engineering as part of the school curriculum. Alistair Allen. Curriculum for Excellence enables young people in schools to develop their skills and focus on the learning needed for a modern dynamic economy consistent with the developing Scotland's young workforce agenda. Within the curriculum framework and through the suite of computing science national qualifications, learners have many opportunities to develop the understanding and skills which will enable them to take up careers uh, in software engineering and programming. Thank you, Willie Coffey. Thank you. Can I thank the Minister for that answer? Um, he will be aware, of course, that despite those considerable efforts uh, over recent years, we are still well short of producing the numbers of software engineers in Scotland that we require. Um, Estonia seems to have made great strides in establishing a world-class reputation for producing software excellence in software engineers. Uh, what more does the Minister think we might be able to do to raise the profile, particularly in schools, of careers in software design so that youngsters can see the fantastic career opportunities that lie ahead? Minister. Well, uh, I'm always happy to, to learn from the experience of other countries. Certainly, it's, it's worth saying that uh, in Scotland, however, that uh, £250,000 has been provided recently to VCS uh, to provide learning opportunities uh, for teachers as part of our uh, Plan C project about making sure uh, that uh, the skills and the, the confidence uh, is there amongst teachers um, to keep up with this fast-changing uh, subject. In terms of teacher numbers, um, the, uh, the government recognises that this is a, a, a subject uh, which deserves uh, some priority given uh, the, the demand uh, which exists for it. Um, and it's also true to say as well that uh, uh, understanding the career opportunities that are there is an important message to put out in the, the curriculum and which has been reflected in national career events as well. Supplementary from Liz Smith. Uh, thank you. Uh, could I ask the Scottish Government whether it's given any thought uh, to the call from the Royal Society of Chemistry to broaden the science curriculum to include subjects like engineering and to start with having dedicated science teachers in primary schools? Minister. Well, the uh, Royal Society for Chemistry and others uh, have uh, made uh, very important contributions uh, to the debate about science, particularly, as the member mentions, uh, in primary. And I think there is now uh, a much uh, wider ac acceptance of, but more importantly, understanding of the need for, for science in primary. And uh, a great deal of work goes into creating um, the, the skills and the confidence to use those skills amongst primary classroom teachers to ensure uh, that science is firmly grounded in the primary curriculum. Thank you. Question number six, Stuart Stevenson. To ask the Scottish Government how the Raising Attainment for All programme is raising the standards of education in schools. Cabinet Secretary Angela Constance. Presiding officer, raising attainment and reducing educational inequality is a top priority for the Scottish Government, Education Scotland and all our partners. The Raising Attainment for All programme was launched in June this year. It involves over 150 schools from 12 local authorities the programme brings a structured approach to improvement into Scottish schools. The Raising Attainment for All programme will complement the other work announced in the programme for government, uh, including the Read Write Count campaign and the creation of attainment advisors for every local authority through Education Scotland. Stuart Stevenson. Uh, may I very much welcome the uh, Minister's answer and its ambition, but can she uh, further explain how the programme is going to make a real difference uh, to break the connection that currently exists between social deprivation and educational achievement for too many pupils. Cabinet Secretary. Well, of course, poverty doesn't stop uh, at the, the school gates. We know that poverty very much can undermine our efforts to make progress. And, of course, uh, Westminster policies are undeniably uh, making the situation more challenging. However, education brings choices and opportunities. It brings roots out of poverty uh, for children and young people. And it can and should be the key uh, in breaking the cycle of generational poverty, uh, which can be all too real in modern-day Scotland. So the Raising Attainment for All programme and the other interventions that I've mentioned will indeed help schools to relentlessly focus on doing everything they can to erode that connection between deprivation and poor educational attainment. Supplementary, Neil Bebby. 
Can I congratulate the Cabinet Secretary on her appointment and wish her well in um, her new role? Uh, last week, the First Minister said that against every main measure, education was improving. We would, of course, expect that after being in government for seven and a half years, but it's not true because in areas like numeracy, the Scottish Government's own figures show that standards are actually falling. Can I therefore ask the Education Secretary whether she counts numeracy as a main measure of educational achievement and what action is the Cabinet Secretary going to take to address numeracy standards? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, absolutely. Uh, numeracy is an, an important priority. Uh, it has to be viewed uh, with the same parity of esteem with the importance that we place on literacy. Uh, numeracy is indeed at the heart of Curriculum for Excellence um, and we have committed £1.2 million uh, over the next three years to accelerate uh, the development of local authority uh, numeracy hubs um, and there are currently six uh, numeracy hubs uh, led by uh, various areas uh, up and down the country. But it is true to say that our attainment record in Scotland uh, is good and improving when you look at PISA results, uh, when you look at the attainment gap and where it has closed in terms of maths, reading and science, whether you look at school leaver destinations uh, or indeed uh, the record number of passes at higher and advanced higher. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, I'm clear attainment uh, for all and closing the equity gap is my top priority and we must pick up the pace. Very briefly, Mary Scanlon, please. Uh, in terms of uh, attainment, 35 per cent of S2 pupils in 2013 were not working at their expected level of numeracy compared to 2 per cent of P7. Why is there such a deterioration in only two years? Cabinet Secretary. I think Mrs Scanlon makes an important point that when you compare uh, the progress of the similar surveys for literacy, uh, you know, progress in attainment uh, remains at a, a good level of attainment, remains at 80% plus. And then there is indeed something that happens, uh, perhaps between that transfer between um, uh, primary school and the first few years in secondary school. But as I've already indicated in my answer uh, to Mr Bibby, uh, numeracy uh, is indeed a priority for this government for the actions uh, that I've outlined. Uh, and numeracy, uh, along with lit literacy, uh, is absolutely the core uh, for ensuring all our children uh, attain more and are prepared for the world of work. Many thanks. Question number seven, Christina McKelvey. Uh, thank you very much, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government how it assists general teaching staff in helping them to ensure that pupils with autistic spectrum disorders receive full support. Alistair Allen. To help teachers and educational support staff meet the needs of pupils with autism, the Scottish Government funded Scottish Autism to produce the Autism Toolbox website. This online national tool will encourage best practice for all education staff in schools to support pupils with autism. The Toolbox website will also provide a forum for continually updating and disseminating good practice. Scottish Autism have offered all education authorities uh, awareness sessions on the Autism Toolbox. Thank you, Christina McKelvey. Uh, can I thank the Minister for that and reassure him that some of the teachers and parents that I have spoken to uh, welcome the, the Toolbox website. But it is the case for many children in the spe uh, autistic spectrum that homework is a very stressful time, which often strays. Uh, um, strays into you know, some of the, the, the challenges that young people with autism spectrum disorders have uh, um, out of school. Um, it, it's welcome you know, uh, that the Minister is saying about the toolbox. Could, but can the Minister join me in asking what work can be done to help support children better with autism spectrum disorders and dealing with work that they have to undertake away from the structure of the classroom? Minister. Well, the, the member uh, rightly points to the fact that uh, homework can provide a, a particular uh, source of uh, uh, stress for, for children and young people uh, uh, with autistic spectrum disorder. And for that reason, the uh, government and the education system uh, are keen to, to provide support. Um, one of the most important forms of support is, of course, uh, continuing professional development of teachers. Uh, and another is that uh, the, through the autism strategy uh, launched in 2011, uh, there are a number of uh, one-stop shops uh, aimed at providing uh, many forms of support, not least one which exists uh, within Lanarkshire. Briefly, please, Mark MacDonald. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm dealing with a constituency case involving a teenage autistic boy who considers that his teachers do not understand his literal interpretation of remarks nor his lack of tact, and this has led to him becoming disengaged educationally. Can the Minister advise what support is in place to enable existing teaching staff to gain greater understanding through CPD and also for new teaching staff through teacher training to be given a greater understanding so that when they start in post, they have a much firmer understanding of autism and autistic spectrum disorder? Minister. 
Uh, well, as the member rightly says, uh, one of the, the biggest uh, tasks here is to make sure that teachers understand uh, what autism is uh, and what uh, it can mean for a, a child or a young person. Uh, one uh, of the uh, central um, uh, tenets of the standard for full registration is that uh, teachers, new teachers, identify barriers to learning which may exist and uh, respond to those appropriately. Uh, and the Autism Toolbox, uh, I believe, amongst many other functions, uh, does perform an import important role uh, in ensuring that teachers understand what autism is. Thank you. Question number eight, Jane Baxter. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government whether it will provide an update on the progress of the accompanying guidance for the Children and Young People Scotland Act 2014. Aileen Campbell. Statutory guidance on Part 6, the Early Learning and Childcare of the Children and Young People Scotland Act 2014, was published in August 2014 to coincide with Part 6 coming into force. The remaining statutory guidance to accompany the Act will be formally consulted on prior to publication with the appropriate timescales ahead of commencement of the relevant parts of the Act. Thank you, Jane Baxter. I thank the Minister for that answer. The Minister will know from her recent meeting with the Scottish Kinship Care Alliance how strongly kinship carers feel about some of the proposed changes to the support they receive. The girth-like provisions within the Children and Young People Scotland Act are vital for many kinship carers. Could the Minister give more detail on the guidance being developed around the Child's Plan and any other aspects of the girth-like guidance which could determine what support will be available to kinship care families? Minister. Um, yeah, I thank the, the member for her um, replies, and I might be able to follow some of this, the more detailed issues around uh, the, the implementation and the consultation on guidance in, in writing to her, but certainly the statutory guidance on parts 4, 5 uh, and 18 of the, child, of the Act, which includes Child's Plan and Wellbeing, uh, will be, we, can, we intend to consult on from February to April next year. Uh, which I think should give some clarity for the kinship carers as well. Not least as well, we'll be um, bringing forward consultation on the guidance that's to accompany the kinship care order as well for the Act. But I'm happy to continue to engage with the member on the different timescales for the different parts of the Act, which all have their own uh, different uh, times of commencement. So um, I'll, I'll keep in touch with the member on those uh, points. Many thanks. Is. Question number nine has been withdrawn for understandable reasons. So I turn to question number 10, James Dornan. To ask the Scottish Government for an update on its Getting It Right for Every Child strategy. Aileen Campbell. Uh, the key driver of our Getting It Right for Every Child approach is the Children and Young People Act, which received royal assent in March this year. The GERFEC duties in the Act are to be implemented in August 2016. Thank you, James Dornan. Thank the Minister for that answer. Does she agree with me that a large share of the credit for the success of GERFEC to date is the role that voluntary bodies such as Homestart, which does invaluable work in my constituency, play in the strategy? Will the Minister agree to visit Homestart to see for herself the good work they do? And will she update the Chamber on what the Scottish Government is doing to continue to ensure that this aspect of GERFEC continues to thrive? Minister. I thank uh, the member for raising the, the good work that Homestart has done in his constituency and I'm also aware of the good work that happens in other parts of this country as well, not least in the Highlands, to support families with young children, helping to ensure that parents have the skills and the confidence necessary to build better lives for their children. And the work that the Homestart and other non-statutory bodies do is indeed a crucial component of getting it right for every child and young person in Scotland. And that's why we have a number of key relationships with a number of, of groups and organisations that are taking forward the good work that um, uh, James Dornan um, outlines has been carried forward by the Home Start. In terms of a, a visit, I am happy to take forward a visit. I'm not sure if it will be me or it could be my maternity replacement, Fiona McLeod. But nonetheless, regardless of who it is, we would both be uh, very pleased to come and uh, see the work that James Dornan has raised today in the Chamber. Many thanks. Question number 11, Neil Findlay. To ask the Scottish Government what action it has taken to encourage people to attend further education courses. Cabinet Secretary Angela Constance. Our reforms mean courses are increasingly tailored to student and employer need, uh, making them more attractive to people who want to progress to good jobs or further study. The Developing the Young Workforce programme will build on this, providing more and better pathways for people to benefit from a first-class vocational education closely linked to labour market need. Neil Finlay. Often it is uh, short, non-certificated course, courses that is enough to begin a person's journey back into education. The Minister will know that her government is 140,000 cut in college places is having a serious impact on adult education. What is the government doing to support adults into the FE sector and support courses 
that were crudely and outrageously described by some of her colleagues as hobby courses. Cabinet Secretary. While the Scottish Funding Council has undoubtedly moved away from very short courses, uh, nonetheless, very short courses remain where they have um, a huge benefit in terms of access or indeed have uh, an economic benefit. So it's not true to say uh, that we've moved entirely away uh, from very short courses. They do still exist. Uh, and of course, we've worked hard to get the right balance of provision. I make no apologies for prioritising young people uh, because it is indeed young people at the end of the day who are always hit the hardest in times of recession. And we should be proud of our record uh, in terms of young people and further education, more young people studying full-time courses that lead to recognised qualifications that boost their prospects of actually getting good work and sustainable employment at that. Thank you. Question number 12, Gavin Brown. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what the budget priorities are for the education and lifelong learning portfolio in 2015-16. Cabinet Secretary Angela Constance. The First Minister made clear last week in publishing the programme for government that attainment is our top priority. Uh, the full budget priorities are set out in the budget document published on the 9th of October 2014. Gavin Brown. Thank you. Um, what happens in real terms to the higher education resource budget in 2015-16? Cabinet Secretary. The Scottish Government is very proud to continue to be investing £1 billion in higher education. That's uh, £1,041 uh, million. Pounds. Uh, uh, within that, we have indeed asked the Scottish Funding Council to keep back, not to allocate uh, £22 million. Pounds. That represents 2% uh, of the budget. Uh, we want to ensure that we have the flexibility as we move forward uh, with our ambitions uh, for uh, post-16 education and training. And there is a commitment uh, to maintain uh, the, the unit resource for teaching. Thank you. Question number 13, Mike McKenzie. Ask the Scottish Government how much will be invested in the programme Scotland Schools for the Future. Alistair Allen. £1.8 billion will be invested in the Scottish Government's Schools for the Future programme in partnership with local authorities and will see the construction of 91 new schools. Further projects to benefit from a fourth phase of the programme will be announced in December, taking this figure well in excess of 100 schools built for over 60,000 pupils by March 2020. Mike McKenzie. I thank the Minister for that answer. I wonder if he could outline how many schools in the Highlands and Islands region will benefit from this funding. Minister. Uh, the Scottish Government have committed uh, to providing Highland Council with funding of almost £26 million for two secondary schools, that's uh, Wick and Inverness Royal Academy. Uh, and moreover, uh, through the uh, phase four of the programme, Highland Council will receive a further £10 million uh, for a new three to 18 campus, which will encompass uh, schools at uh, Tain Royal Academy, Craig Hill Primary, uh, North Breck Primary and St Duffus. Many thanks. Question number 14, Kenneth Gibson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government what consideration it is given to making school inspections without giving prior notice. Alistair Allen. Education in Scotland's inspectors carry out unannounced inspections when they are aware of serious concerns about uh, the care and welfare of pupils at the school. Inspectors have carried out five unannounced school inspections in 2014. Education Scotland is currently discussing with its stakeholders how to develop school inspections for the future. Kenneth Gibson. Yeah, thank the Minister for that answer. Does he agree, though, that at present that uh, ordinary school inspections do not give an accurate picture of a school, given that the weeks of notice given creates a flurry of activity to enable a school to look its best and the work more ordered than might normally be the case, and the unannounced visits, as is the case in the care sector, would better reflect a school for better or for worse. Alistair Allen. Well, I should say that I do have confidence in the inspection regime. Uh, I understand the points the member raises, and they have been discussed in the past uh, within Education Scotland and with uh, uh, stakeholders. There are uh, uh, pros and cons arguments have been put around uh, the proposal that the, the member makes. Uh, the pro being uh, reducing stress uh, uh, and creating a, an accurate impression. Uh, but the, the con uh, being the, the argument against 
uh, perhaps what the member is, is advocating, um, being that we have to be careful about ensuring a relationship between the inspectors and the schools and making sure that uh, inspectors are inspecting with rather than just merely inspecting schools. Uh, there are, however, as I say, five schools uh, which have had a no-warning inspection, although I concede they have been for unusual reasons. A brief supplementary, Liz Smith. Uh, thank you. Has the Minister given any further consideration to whether the state of buildings should be included in a school inspection? Minister. The uh, responsibility for uh, assessing uh, the state of buildings uh, does lie with local authorities, uh, but it is worth saying that the, uh, the work and the money which has gone in uh, centrally has uh, very significantly reduced uh, the number of uh, schools which are in either C or D condition. Uh, and the number of pupils which are currently in a Condition C building uh, is now 104,000, uh, Condition D uh, 6,000, which are very significant reductions uh, on previous years. Thank you. Question 15, Bruce Crawford. Uh, thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what agreements are in place with COSLA regarding the funding of education services. Cabinet Secretary Angela Constance. The majority of funding for education services is provided to local authorities as part of the annual local government finance settlement. However, there are some specific agreements with COSLA with regards to some elements of education funding. The Scottish Government has agreed to fully fund the expansion of early learning and childcare introduced through the Children and Young People Act. Uh, this amounts to £329 million over financial years 2014-15 uh, and 2015-16. And we have provided £41 million in this financial year to maintain teacher numbers in line with pupil numbers and £37.6 million to secure places for all probationers who need one. And we have uh, agreed to provide £24.8 million in capital funding this year and uh, £70.5 million revenue funding uh, over this year and next to cover the delivery of free school meals to pupils in primary 1 to 3 starting next January. Chris Crawford. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her answer. With particular regard to Stirling Council, and given that the Tory Labour parties on the Council voted through a Council tax reduction for the financial year 2012-13, would the Cabinet Secretary agree with me they should have no reason to reduce education services in Stirling or complain about grant funding levels from Government? Cabinet Secretary. As the Scottish Government has fully funded the Council tax freeze, this should have no impact on the level of education services, as Stirling Council was able to reduce its Council tax in 2012-13. Uh, this would suggest that the money provided by the Scottish Government uh, was more than sufficient for the Council to maintain uh, the level of all its services. Question number 16 has been withdrawn and a satisfactory explanation has been provided. Question number 17, Kezia Dugdale. To ask the Scottish Government how many applications to the Access to Education Fund it has received, how many were successful and how much has been awarded in grants? Alice Shallon. There were 609 eligible applications to the Access to Education Fund, of which 247 were successful. A total of uh, £1,500,023 has been awarded to the successful applicants, which will directly benefit 303 schools in every local authority area uh, across Scotland. The Cabinet Secretary for Education and Lifelong Learning visited Fourth U Primary uh, School in Edinburgh this morning to hear from parents, uh, children and staff how this funding will make a difference to them. Uh, and their successful application to the fund will enable them to develop a library, to focus on literacy skills and focus a culture of reading across the school and the wider school community. Their strong focus on parental engagement and working with others and the clear commitment to access to education for all makes this a great example of how this funding is helping to break down barriers to learning across communities. Can I thank the Minister for that answer? The Access to Education Fund is obviously for new projects. It's not supposed to supplement core funding. Given the Cabinet Secretary's answer to Bruce Crawford, can the Minister tell me why some schools are asking parents to pay for paper and books and art resources if the council tax is fully funded? Does he accept that that's happening and does he accept that some parents can't make up the difference? Minister. Well, obviously, the, the, uh, the purpose uh, of the, the fund in question uh, is to make sure that uh, nobody faces barriers uh, to uh, education. And for that reason, uh, the, many of the applications that have, have been uh, put forward successfully have ensured, for instance, uh, that people who face disadvantages, children who face disadvantages, are not disadvantaged by some barrier in the form of IT, uh, to ensure that they are not uh, kept uh, uh, from enjoying school trips, 
and to make sure that everyone is fully included in the life of the school. Applications can be up to 5,000 per school, and I believe they have been successful uh, in ensuring that we have a, an education system that benefits all. Question number 18, Rob Gibson. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what its position is on whether modern studies should be made available in all secondary schools if 16 and 17 year olds have the right to vote in elections. Alistair Allen. We are delighted, uh, but not surprised, at how the referendum did engage 16 and 17 year olds, and their thoughtful and impassioned engagement in the debate created an overwhelming case for giving 16 and 17 year olds the vote in future elections. Uh, we are pleased that the Smith Commission report calls on the UK Parliament to devolve the relevant power in time to allow the Scottish Parliament to extend the franchise to 16 and 17 year olds uh, for the 2016 Scottish parliamentary elections. All young people learn about democracy and political systems as part of their broad general education. Rob Gibson. Uh, thank the Minister for that answer. The problem in Scotland is that uh, modern studies, I think, is fairly unevenly spread. How many secondary schools are there in Scotland and how many of those uh, provide modern studies courses? Alistair Allen. Uh, the most recent information is that some 80% uh, of schools teach uh, modern studies as a specific subject. There are around 70 schools in Scotland which uh, don't, many of them uh, smaller uh, schools, uh, and I suspect that that may be what the member is, is referring to, um, although it should be said that uh, democracy and political literacy do uh, feature uh, within uh, the requirements of uh, the broad general education up till the end of S3, uh, and the, the Scottish Government uh, does take very seriously uh, the arguments which were successfully put forward uh, that we, we deserve a, a generation of young people who are engaged in the political debate. Thank you. Question number 19, Michael McMahon. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government how it will tackle the link between child poverty and educational attainment. Cabinet Secretary Angela Constance. The Scottish Government and all of its partners have a strong shared commitment to raising attainment and achievement for all and closing the equity gap between children and young people who are most and least advantaged. We are supporting a range of activities, including Raising Attainment for All, which is working, as I said earlier, with over 150 schools across Scotland uh, to drive forward sustainable and consistent improvement. The School Improvement Partnership Programme, our Access to Education Fund, and as announced in our programme for government attainment advisors to be based in every local authority across Scotland, as well as a very clear focus on improving literacy and numeracy in P1 to P3 pupils uh, through our Read, Write, Count programme. Michael McMahon. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her response, but with uh, recent uh, reports indicating that you know, students from uh, more affluent backgrounds are 50 times more likely than uh, students from more deprived areas to uh, obtain uh, five higher grades A, and other statistics showing huge gulfs between academic achievement uh, from affluent areas to deprived areas, will the Cabinet Secretary give us a clear indication today what practical measures are being taken to reduce those gulfs because we cannot allow our education system to maintain uh, such differentials between uh, students with uh, strong academic potential uh, not achieving their, their uh, aims and ambitions because of the geographical area in which they uh, happen to grow up. Cabinet Secretary. Absolutely. I think Mr McMahon and I are in agreement that inequity anywhere in our education system uh, is not acceptable and this government will do everything within our existing powers uh, to tackle poverty and inequality. I've already said to members uh, previously today that my top priority as the Cabinet Secretary for Education and Lifelong Learning is attainment for all to raise that and to do everything that we can to close uh, the equity and attainment gap. Uh, I do regret that we don't have more welfare power uh, to tackle poverty, uh, but nonetheless, we will, with the powers that we have, uh, focus on pragmatic measures on the front line within schools that will make a practical difference uh, to the lives uh, of our children on a day-to-day -day basis and ensuring that more of our children uh, reach their full potential. Thank you. If we're very brief, question number 20, Gordon MacDonald. To ask the Scottish Government how the expansion of funded early learning and childcare will benefit the most disadvantaged. Aileen Campbell. Through the Children and Young People Act, we are investing £329 million in this financial year and next to expand annual funded early learning and childcare for three and four-year-olds to 600 hours. That represents an increase which will save families up to £707 per year per child 
and we have extended this entitlement to our most disadvantaged two-year-olds, with around 15 per cent becoming eligible in the current school year, rising to 27 per cent next year. That is more than any of our, our predecessors have done, and more hours of childcare than in any other part of the UK. Briefly, please, Mr Macdonald. I thank the Minister for that answer. Could the Minister outline what the Scottish Government is doing to raise awareness of funded childcare to parents and carers? Minister. We launched the second phase of our marketing campaign to raise awareness amongst parents and carers of the expanded childcare entitlement. That follows an initial phase of public information that happened in the summer. And this uh, new uh, launch of this campaign coincided with the Cabinet Secretary's visit to Melville Street Nursery in Edinburgh, uh, which I hope will address some of the concerns the member raises. Many thanks. That concludes questions. And we now move to the next item of business. I would ask members to change places as quickly as possible. Thank you.